Hello, everyone. This is News Now from the Belmont Journal, and we are joined by Joanna Jubilus of the Belmont Citizen Herald for our regular weekly update on news in Belmont. And I'm your host, Mike Crowley. Good to see you again, Joanna. Happy to be here, Mike. Well, good. So COVID cases are trending down, vaccinations are up, and Governor Baker is adjusting the state's requirements for mask wearing. What can you tell us, Joanna? Sure. I'm sure most of our viewers are familiar, but if not, it's really big news that on May 17th, Governor Baker announced that the mask mandate is is no longer going to be needed for certain people. I'll explain that in a minute. And um, so that's as of May 29th. And then the emergency ban is going to be lifted June 15th, which is a lot sooner than what we originally thought. And that was going to affect how meetings are going to be happening in Belmont. They, they will no longer be Zoom meetings. They will be in-person meetings starting June 15th. Although I don't have confirmation yet from the town for sure, but that that's what they're planning unless they said they get ex an extension from the state. But right now, uh, the way it works, the open meeting law requires, uh, was only allowing Zoom meetings during this emergency ban. And once it's lifted, um, they'll no longer be allowed unless there's an extension. And it's possible that town hall will be reopening and all the town offices will be reopening June 15th. But again, I don't have confirmation on that. But what I, what I can tell you is that Belmont is basically following the CDC guidelines. And what that is, is um, as of May 29th, non-vaccinated individuals um, should still wear masks um, indoors. That's what, you know, they're and, and continue social distancing. But if you're fully vaccinated, meaning you've had both doses of Pfizer or Moderna, or you've had the one dose of J&J, &J, you don't need to wear face coverings in most set settings, indoors and outdoors. Okay, so Joanna, so town is, meeting will still, the, the June segment of town meeting will still be conduct, conducted over Zoom, won't it? Yes. Okay. And, and masks aren't going away completely, even for vaccinated individuals. You'll still have to wear them on public transportation, you'll still have to wear them in healthcare facilities. Students and staff will still have to wear them in the schools. But I think it's it's pretty big news and that um, in most settings, unless a business still decides to require it, you won't need to wear it if you're fully vaccinated. And the other good news is that the, the limits on events, uh, outdoor and indoor, are also being lifted as part of that emergency ban. So for people planning weddings, or you know, with all these graduation events coming up, it's it's great news for them that as of June fifteenth, you will not have the one hundred fifty person limit for an outdoor gathering or a hundred person limit for an indoor gathering. I'll bet that June fifteenth is a popular date for weddings. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of weddings are already uh, being planned, but now they're they're glad that they can maybe uh, include everybody they wanted to include. And Belmont's vaccination statistics, Mike are actually um, really good and in fact possibly better than the uh, overall state vaccination statistics according to the assistant health director Diana Ekman. She said 51% of Belmont residents are fully vaccinated, 66% um, have at least one dose, um, adults 20 and up about 84% are vaccinated with at least one dose and compared to the state um, that's it's the state is 75% for one dose. So we're ahead of them because we're 84%. And we're ahead in the 65 plus group for vaccinations. And also the middle school and the high school in Belmont are having vaccine clinics on May 24th for students 12 and up. Well, that is good news. It is, it is. I mean, I know some people are still nervous about it, but um, I think if you talk to your doctor, it, it could put your mind at ease but it's a very personal decision. All right, jo Joanna, next topic. Um, the town has had to make some budget adjustments for next year. This is the result of the failed passage of the April override. You know, what are we looking at for the town budget? Okay, well, last week I reported on the schools. They finalized their no override budget. Now the town has had a no override budget since February, it was presented in February. However, it has some slight changes, but, but why don't I just tell you uh, what, it, what it was and what, it, what the slight changes are. All right, that sounds good. The town had to reduce its budget 
if the override failed by 1.38 million. And in order to do that, they had to make some cuts in some departments. So in the Office of Community Development, they are cutting the residential engineer position. That position has already, actually that person has already been issued their, their pink slip. Um, the Department of Public Works is cutting two positions. The fire department is cutting a position. Police is cutting one position plus a cruiser. Um, there were some positions that they were going to hire, but those will not be hired. So the town is going to hire a so social worker full-time. That position will not be filled. They were going to spend, yeah, they were going to spend half a million on discretionary capital. They're not going to spend 500 million, uh, 500,000 on discretionary capital. That is being cut. However, there's a new, some, some, Changes, good news, because the new fire chief, David DiStefano, as previously reported uh, by Franklin Tucker, he upped some of the fees um, that the town charges for emerg emergency medical services. So this is going to generate additional recurring revenue for the town of about 250000 annually. So with those that additional recurring revenue, Patrice Garvin, our town administrator, said she, she wants to use that recovering revenue to fund the systems manager position, which was going to be cut, but now they can fill it. Actually, it was a new position that they weren't going to fill, but now they are going to fill it. And this person, Mike, is basically in charge of overseeing the heating and cooling in the new Bel Belmont Middle and High School, but all the facilities in Belmont all the heating and cooling systems and all the you know major systems in these buildings is what this person will be responsible for. And they're, they're actually gonna be working closely with the energy committee once they're hired to look at other ways the town can save money uh, you know, through energy savings. So that's really, that's really the big news for Monday night select board meeting, but also um, the, diverse, the diversity position that they were going to hire, now they can partially fund that uh, through this additional revenue that the town is going to be getting from emergency medical services. So they could either hire a diversity coordinator or do an equity audit. But I do have some more news and I feel like I'm doing all the talking here, but there's, okay. one, <laughs> there's one other position that Patrice said she wants to hire, but this is, um, she's basically using some of the additional funds that um, she's saving by, by some of the cuts that she made, but she's putting it in her department and she's going to um, hire a finance director. This person will replace the budget director and it'll have different responsibilities. So the budget director position, um, there's still a placeholder for it. There's still benefits for it. That's included in the budget that wasn't being cut, but it's going to be replaced by what they're calling a finance director. And, and they don't have a job description for it yet or anything, but I'm sure this will all be discussed at town meeting. So so let me ask you, Joanna, does this mean that somebody will be let go in order to make room for for the new finance director position? No, no, no one's, no one's going to be let go. I haven't received confirmation on what's happening to the budget director. The budget director, according to Patrice Garvin, uh, that position will be vacant soon. From what I understand, Glenn Castro has been the budget director, but he's now the interim town accountant. Okay. So, so he's been overseeing accounting and there hasn't been anybody in his uh, shoes. So that, that position has been vacant and now it'll be changed. The responsibilities will be changed. The title will be changed and someone new will come into that. All right. Well, it sounds like a good move. <laughs> um, and, and we'll have to see, we'll have to see how town meeting votes, but most likely they, they will, um, uh, discuss this and, and coming up soon next month. All right. And so lastly, Joanna, we have a significant donation that's been made for the benefit of the town by a local couple. And I'm wondering if you can tell us about that. Sure. I always like to end with good news, Mike. So this is good news. Belmont residents, Mark and Angie Greger, they're um, making their mark on the town through their generous donations. They recently donated 25,000 to help beautify Belmont Center for outdoor dining. And Monday night at the select board meeting, uh, it was announced that they are donating $17,000 for the recreation department's event needs. So the donation, Mike, is gonna be used to purchase equipment for movie nights, including uh, screens and speakers and cables 
and the motion picture license, as well as uh, other fun activities to go along with movie nights like face painting and giveaways. And this will all be happening this summer, starting this summer. Uh, look for the announcement in early June by the rec department about uh, when these nights will be and where. According to Assistant Town Administrator John Marshall, they will be held outdoors in parks, but he doesn't know which parks yet. He doesn't, they haven't worked out all the logistics yet. Um, they, they, you may also have to register for the event. And the good news is it will be free, completely free of charge. That does sound good. Well, thank you so much, Joanna. And we'll talk with you again next time. You can You're find welcome. more news from the Belmont Citizen Herald at belmont.wickedlocal.com. You've been watching the Belmont Journal's News Now. I'm Mike Crowley, and I'll see you next time.